Well, hey there, YouTube. It's Petey Two Finger here with a recommendation video. Uh, I've got a Facebook account, and right now I've got 55 friends. Now, typically, the, the most I ever had, I think, was 180, and I called that down to 20 uh, in 2016. Um, I just got rid of all those people that I had went to school with, and uh, just people that take pictures of hotel rooms um, you know what I mean like they uh, all this plate of food, expensive plate of food that I ate like I've got nothing in common with you if you if that's the extent of your Facebook is showing off uh, a hotel room that you stayed in uh, or a plate of food that you ate we're on a different wavelength and I don't have you're never gonna come into uh, my world and say gee that's interesting what is that that you're you are? and I would say oh that's a circuit that I built because I like to make music blah 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 and even in like finding like pedal builders comp people who own companies there's to me there's two types of, of Facebook person there's these people who like maybe they run a music blog like a progressive like prog rock music blog and they they're on some kind of like power trip where they've got like 250 people that hang on their every word they're posting constantly from a phone everything that they post they don't doesn't require any effort it's just like maybe they'll move some stuff around and set up like if they're gonna show their the book, the novel that they'll they're reading, they'll have some Miles Davis CDs out, and they'll have some uh, collectibles, you know, Star Trek, whatever it is that makes them, you know, Blade Runner guy with a overcoat on, Matrix, whatever, uh, nerd, you know, I'm a nerd. Look at me. And those types of people are great, but they tend to, they never come out and slum it. They don't ever go out into their fans, the people that, like, when they, if they defecate and they take a picture of that excrement, the people that they're, they get 65 hearts saying, oh, oh my goodness, that's the best feces I've ever seen. These people, they, and it might, might be good for them to do that from time to time is to step out and slum it meaning if you break out of your own cocoon and you start looking at what other people share you find some cool stuff so it's not so much selfish it's rewarding uh, so that's kind of how I play my Facebook game I like to find people who uh, will maybe there's a chance that they're gonna comment occasionally on what I might be have posted but it's it's rare it's really rare uh, as probably people look at me like I'm out of my mind because I'm constantly taking pictures of what that that's to me what I get excited about is if I'm working on something and I finish it I'm like let me take a picture of that and save that to have my life my work uh, to have it somewhere, have it stored, a record of what I did. So that's how I play that game. And one of the people I recently friended is a guy by the name of Analog Man Mike Piera. And he's, uh, if you look him up, he's he's a businessman, and I think he's written uh, An Analog Man Mike. He's a fairly well-known guy in the uh, pedal, boutique pedal industry. So here we go to buyanalogman.com. This is like his store. And we see, uh, who, who are we? Analog Man is the, one of the larger guitar effects dealers in the world with customers from Australia to Japan to Europe. Even so, we are small. We try to treat everyone like a rock star. Buy Analog Man, but Analog Man is not just a dealer, it's a brand, quite unique. 
and that it may be the only enterprise which manufactures, modifies, buys, sells, and repairs vintage and new guitar effects, specializing in vintage, high-end, uh, you won't find cheap Taiwanese Happy Meal toy style effects here. Analog Mike has been playing with guitar effects since he brought his Maestro Phaser in the mid-70s to make his Farfisa organs and Hagstrom II sound better. You will see the same white Hagstrom in the shop still being used to test modified pedals. So yeah, Analog Man, he has an internet presence. He's involved in buying and selling vintage effects, buying and selling boutique and custom effects. He manufactures his Analog Man brand of effects. He modifies pedals to sound and work better. Repair service, including specialists in different uh, referrals to specialists in different areas, creating the best new effects with vintage values, free help with effects problems by email or better yet in our forum, he's got a forum, referrals to individuals and companies related to guitars or music, professional consultation and technical services on the Northeast. So analogman.com uh, you can friend him on uh, on Facebook, and he he does a live stream. He's got a music area that he calls Madison Square Basement. I think he's in Madison, Wisconsin. Maybe I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, I should look into that. Now, today, Analog Man, I. It, you keep hearing about this guy as being around in the pedal community. And you keep hearing someone who calls himself Analog Man. To me, it's annoying. I'm just going to be honest. Like Anybody who like makes a big deal about Analog, to me, is inferring that digital is bad. And I hate that. To me, that's snobbery. This guy's not really like that. I think anybody that's worth their salt in the guitar game is going to really, they're going to come clean and tell you, hey, the digital is getting better and it has its place. And, it, and a matter of fact, we live in a digital world where everything is mastered to digital. It's a fact of life. It's not so much of a compromise as it used to be. Yes, it used to be that a lot of the stuff that was out there that was marketed uh, fell short. Now, not so much. Now the stuff's catching up and it sounds great. Uh, but there still is this thing <clears throat> that you can't get with digital. If you get the real deal, ancient transistors, and this is where uh, analog man Mike Piera has dug out his niche. This guy knows from experience. He's experienced and he he's sought these uh, rare components out and played around with them. And so that's what you see with Analog Man. When I friended him, he's earned his title because he's putting up videos where he's got the same circuit and he's swapping out transistors for you to hear what it actually sounds like when you put red dot NTTK 75s up against um, and now I'm completely shit talking here, but I'm going to say a Russian germanium. And I'm sure I'm wrong. He probably doesn't like to play around with Russian germaniums. This guy's uh, a little bit on the next tier. So that's who this guy is. If you're into this type of thing and you're not friends with him, check him out. Uh, he's a cool guy. He's not one of these, uh, you know, pretty much anybody who's going to go on when they see a comment, if they see some kid, a cop to using a Line 6, who's going to come in there and beat the guy down and be like, my tube amp sounds better. Like, why would you want to play around with something like that? It's digital. The only, everyone knows the only way to go is, you know, if you're going to boogie, you got to do it right with a tube amp. That type of stuff, that's what makes me see red. I cannot stand that. Um, and for one, the, 
the people who are uh, uh, using digital, they're not going anytime they see some, anybody mention a tube amp saying, ha ha ha, you got three, maybe four sounds out of your whole rig. I got 200 presets and they're all full of custom patches and every one sounds completely different. So, uh, yeah, you just don't see it kind of working the other way because it's, it's, it's not as hip because of the perception of the community. And that's my own personal battle that I fight every day when I'm online is trying to shift that perception that, hey, it's not nothing to be ashamed of if you're not playing through a massive tube rig. Because for one, they're unbelievably inefficient. They create so much amount of heat. Um, they're they're really limited in what they do. Uh, and for the final nail in the coffin is that the digital now can copy that really well. It's not a hundred percent yes, but it, but it's close. And in some cases, it is. The only thing they're lacking is the the feel. And there's ways to get to get that. To achieve that as well so I don't see it so cut and dry and I don't appreciate when people act like it is because most often they're speaking out of ignorance now that I've gotten that out of the way and if you're if you're new here you are a tube amp aficionado we can be friends that's fine just understand that I live in an apartment I own tube gear, but I can't crank it up here because the cops, got, the police will come and kick the door down. I've had my door kicked in before for playing guitar too well. It's happened. I had the whole door frame kicked out. Okay, and it's not. It's a. It's not a good feeling. It's a very, very bad feeling. Okay, so the decision to switch over and be a responsible tenant and use headphones and use modeling. That's put me on a road building class D amps and making music outdoors and all the stuff that I do to to compensate for that, to be able to do it, to be able to push air. Uh, I kind of have earned a little bit of a right uh, because not only do I talk the talk, but I walk the walk. And that's evident as you get to know me through this YouTube channel and all of the work that I've done, which is building powered speakers. Class D amps um, using seal lead acid batteries or recycled lithium ion 18650 cell batteries, like what's in this. What's in this? What's in this? And many, many, many. More. Now, today, Mike Analog Man shared a link. Oh, I was actually like yesterday or the day before. Um, this is really what I what I wanted to talk about. But I, I I'm I'm just very passionate. About the analog versus digital debate. Now let's see analog. Analog Mike Pierre, here we go. We're going to go over to his page. He had posted yesterday at 5.06 p.m. One of my heroes. Sounds like a great guy, too. Interview with Craig Anderton. This is the book. This started it all. Electronic Projects for Musicians, going back to 1975. Discussion with the legendary music technology expert, Craig Anderton. The man. This is the guy that wrote the book. His book, Electronic Projects for Musicians, launched the careers of several boutique pedal builders. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn you on to this podcast, this interview, it, uh, it's Analog Man, Mike Pira shared this, so a big thanks going out to him, I wish him nothing but success, I kind of had the wrong idea of, of, of Analog Man, Mike, there's some people that do, uh, they, they uh, charge you 
to modify um, pedals. And I, I've seen some pricing that I just don't agree with. I don't think it's worth what certain people are charging to do these jobs. I think it's highway robbery. And, but then again, I don't understand about things like overhead in a business. Well, that being said, um, if you need a pedal mod, I'm not going to do it for you. Okay? Let me get that out there right away. I don't, there's no money going on with me making money off people because I don't have what it takes. I can't look you in the eye and say, I'm going to charge you 60 bucks to mod your pedal. I can't do that. I don't, I don't have the uh, clientele. The people that I know, they're like, you build me a pedal and I'll pay you 30. That's the people that I know. And these are everyday working musicians. These are people that have bills to pay. They simply can't afford it. So, Analog Mike, I think he's more or less the real deal guy. I went looking on his thing. However, I do have a question about his Amazed. Uh, there's the Amazed, which is $150, and then the Amazed, which appears to be the same thing with different firmware. Now, the Amazed is $150. The Amazed is $15,000. So I'm a little bit curious about that. I actually emailed him, or I, I PM, sent him a personal message on Facebook. We'll see if we can clear that mystery up. So the jury's out on Analog Mike. I'm, I'm leaning towards that this guy's, well, yes, of course, he knows what he's doing. Is he a practicing highway robbery? Is he a pirate? Uh, you know, honestly, when you when you when you're gonna go through somebody like this guy who spent his life, like this, he is a pedal guru, for real, for real, for real. This guy knows more about pedals than anybody you're ever gonna talk to more than likely. Um, so at that point you're going to pay a little bit more than if you went on eBay and got it from um, Fast High Time Shopper 69. You know? So you got to take that in consideration now. Uh, this interview with Craig Anderton, it's on the Sonic Nuance Electronics blog. Here I'm seeing hear everything always. And we're just going to go to the About tab and click on that. Uh, the guy who interviews Craig Anderton. Hello, my name is, name is Ted Burmus. And I'm the guy, uh, he's into music and live sound. And he has this company. And here he is riding a bicycle. Here he is, looks like playing some sort of a elaborate bass. Is he bowing that device? Yes, and he's got some type of an effect on a stand. Multiple, oh maybe those aren't effects, maybe that's like a, uh, a worship team monitor device. So right on this, um, this might be a cool blog sonicnuance.com. I'm going to go ahead and give them the thumbs up. I listened to about half of this interview and it's awesome. It's excellent. Craig Anderton is the man. He was uh, doing Ultimate Guitar for a while. And like I said, uh, my thing goes back to reading magazines as a kid in the back. There was an ad, send self-addressed stamped envelopes and you could will send you this newsletter for free and it was called polyphony and so I did that and uh, I explained to my mom listen this is about um, circuitry and synthesizers and music and I want to learn about this and she was like what and she should have known better <laughs> But I bought, I bought the stamps off of her and sent whatever it was, if it was stamped envelopes or money, it was some kind of like a really good deal. And I started receiving these, I remember they had an article on a 
Shepard function generator, which you could build this and it would give the illusory effect of a barber pole filter. Barber pole, the stripes on a barber pole, how they never stop going up. And you would plug this LFO function generator into your effects that had LFO ports on them. So it was an advanced um, project, but I comprehended it and I was like, this is so cool. This is like what I want to do. I want to get into this. And then well, learning about uh, germanium transistors and fuzz boxes and all that type of stuff led me to uh, polyphony as a newsletter turned into a magazine, which I subscribed to. And later on, it turned into Electronic Musician magazine, which is more of a famous publication. You may even have read that before. Um, Craig Anderton created the company along uh, with the book. I'm not sure if uh, Craig's involvement on the company, but the book, uh, which I ordered, was called Electronic Projects for Musicians, and it had all the circuitry you could build to, to accomplish guitar effects. And then there was a company called Paya, P-A-I-A-A. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but the Paya effect kits would let you build uh, they came with the circuit board and the parts, and then you would solder everything together, put it in your own chassis, wire it all up, and there you go. So I did the Gemini amp, I did the ring modulator in a rack mount chassis that was a, a, a Dodd delay, an echo unit, that my singer ruined. And I remember when they wrecked it, finally when they ruined it, it was a karate fight that they had in the music area uh, in my mom's garage and they knocked over uh, a whole thing and on top of it was the delay and that rack mount delay Steve Austin six million dollar man sound effect bah, 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 bah. and that was it so I ended up gutting that thing later my, my singer gave it to me hey do you want this I got it like a goof. I don't think I saved anything off of it. I should have completely stripped it or just saved it. You know, like an idiot. But uh, I still have the ring modulator. It works. It's got the bipolar power supply. So yeah, that's my Craig Anderton story. I also built the uh, the uh, funnel with the driver. The, uh, the talk box and I have that on a few recordings so check out Four Fingered Horrors or uh, Rock and Roll Night uh, a couple of songs you could check out on this channel uh, enjoy the interview uh, it's awesome stuff and I'll talk to you guys soon